Come on into our live broadcast. Thank you so much for waiting. I am here with the Hat Master for the second time, Skip Davis. We started the broadcast and you guys were like, we can't even hear you. We can't see what you're saying. Well, guess what? We hope you can see now. So I need to hear somebody say, yes, we can see you. Yes, we can hear you. I see some yays happening and we are live as always. So things happen. So we appreciate your patience. But we're going to uh, dive in. We have a lot of exciting things to cover. Uh, we're still going to give you a full hour's worth of time. So thank you for staying with us just past the 4 o'clock hour Eastern time because we're going to learn from the hat master, Skip Davis. So Skip, to kind of bring us in and get us started, tell the audience a little bit about uh, your business and how you got involved with stalls. So um, my business is D4 Graphics, and we've been in business for 13 years. We just passed 13 years in September, which is super exciting. We went from pressing shirts for families and friends in the basement of my house for a couple of years and then decided to go full time. So I left my normal job, as they say, and got into the heat press business full time, went legit. And um, it's been great ever since. 13 years later, here we are. Excellent. Excellent. So um, I see a note, have someone work on Josh's audio. So I think my audio may be a little hot for some people. So I'll try to talk just a little bit softer until they get it down. But um, we're excited because we have a lot to go over today. And so uh, at D4 Graphics, I know you're basically running shop from home. And we were going to tee this thing up back in March of 2020 before a little thing uh, called the pandemic happened. Yeah, we had this plan. Um, I believe we had a date set and everything. And we got within two weeks of that date and got shut down just like everybody else did. And I think probably for the better because now we have the 360 IQ to talk about decorating hats. A lot's changed in those two years. And if we would have had this conversation two years ago, we'd probably have been talking about a whole different scenario of decorating than we're going to do today. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot that's changed, but let's kind of level set on some of the hat projects you were sure. able to accomplish in your business over the last mm -hmm. little while with the 360 or even your other hat press setups. So we'll come in close and take a look at these. So this one is for a kayak company. Um, I do a lot of work in the bass fishing community. We've got a lot of kayak fishermen out there. So this is a three color HTV application. We've got the black that's down first. Then we put the blue down. Then we got the white down on top of it. And we're actually gonna show you a three color application today here also. Um, but what's cool about this hat is we have a side print for the fisherman's last name. And then we also have the back print, which is the name of the kayak company. So we get a nice three location print for the guys that are on the kayak team. Yeah, so three color, three location, lots of craftsmanship, I would say, that went into the making of this hat. Now, we have some extra samples that we wanna show you, mm -hmm. but um, since we're talking about three color vinyl, I know we've teed up a, a complicated project just to give people the basics of how to uh, decorate a hat with HTV. So let's Correct. head on over to the heat press. We'll work on a, a great camera angle for everybody. So you can come on in and watch. Yep. Skip's going to walk in front of our heat press. We're going to level set here and he's actually pre-cut uh, three colors of HTV. And so uh, this is Ecofilm, correct? It is all Ecofilm. Yes. Ecofilm is one of my favorites. I'm not sure I'm supposed to be looking here for the camera. I'll You're good. He's that. coming close up to you. No problem. Um, Ecofilm I love the way it weeds. Um, it gives you a nice, crisp, clean line. And I just love it for hats. It's like my favorite. I don't, I'll use Premium Plus on hats every now and again, but the Ecofilm, as far as tacking it goes and layering it goes, I haven't found a better HTV for layering. Yep. And so you've, you've had some technique that's happened here and even prepping the vinyl for the hat coat. Can you show us here? Yeah. What I want to talk about is a lot of times we don't think about, the shape of our design and how it's gonna lay on the hat. Um, so this is the logo that we're gonna do. We're gonna do a three color um, application, but with the way the hooks curve on each side and the double curve of the hat, if I was to press this solid piece on the hat like this, you run the risk of getting some wrinkles and the way that it lays on the hat, we have to put the blue on also. So to keep the registration and to allow that allow that uh, HTV to form over the hat in a systematic way, I guess, to yeah. keep the uh, the values the same, what, we, what I do is I cut a notch 
out of the top of the V. This one obviously is to show you without the notch. This one has the notch. And then we have the same notch in the blue. What I found is that with this roll and this roll, putting the notch in there allows this logo to set better on the hat and lessen the chance of getting any wrinkles. Also, putting the same V in the second color allows it to roll the same way. So in essence, we don't lose the registration and the border value when we lay that second color down. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so we're going over the seam on a six panel, I assume Richardson or comparable style cap here. It's a Richardson 112. Yeah, Richardson 112, which I know is one of the most popular, one of the most difficult decorate caps on the market. Um, because we are doing HTV, uh, you said we're using top heat only, correct? Yes, we've turned the lower portion of the heat off um, with the HTV. We don't need the lower heat. And with layering, um, the bottom heat, the HTV tends to get a little slippery if you've got that extra heat when you go to place that second, um, second and third layer on there. So we're going to, and actually I want to say Ecofilm is set to press at like 302 or 305. Yep. We've actually got to set a little bit lower because of the layering. And then we'll just dwell longer on the last press to accommodate for the less, right. less heat. Perfect. Let's, let's uh, smash this bottom layer down and see what we're talking okay. about. So I know that the cap's loaded, uh, sweatband's out. Cap's loaded, sweatband's out. Um, I'm gonna give a quick pre-press here. We've got them set for a couple seconds. Well, I guess that was a long, the long dwell time. That's all right, you're back to setting number one, which is what we want. Okay. Now, I don't use thermal tape. I have another way of doing it, but with the hat being warm, in the Ecofilm having good tack, we're just gonna wing it. And I've got a scribed weed box around my logo, which you've seen my videos before. I talk about using that bottom line to dictate the value above the brim so we get it on there even. So like I said, we're gonna eyeball this one. No thermal tape, no nothing. It's gonna sit really nice. And it's especially gonna sit nice because of that V. Yeah. We put that V in there so it doesn't want to lift up. You get good contact clear around the edges too. It lets yeah. it roll over that edge. So let's see, we're down. Okay, we're back to our reg regular setting. So we're going to tack for two seconds. So let's see, the one. So we got the other one with the V cut out of it. No thermal tape, no nothing. We're just going to line these up. That's yeah, nice. When you're shopping for an HTV, I think uh, you like Ecofilm because it does the fine detail, but also has this crystal clear carrier that makes alignment a little bit easier for you. So we're going to let that bite a little bit. We're going to let that adhesive sit on there. Then we're going to hit this one again. I think, what do we got to set? Two or three seconds. We lost our... I'm sorry, just uppercut it. We lost our settings. So look at that registration with that V we put in there. We got a little bubble on that middle seam, but we're going to pull this fancy dancy we're gonna set this tool right in that seam while it's still warm before this third application goes down yeah i know people want to know about this tool so what is this and where do they find it <laughs> does that, anybody know what the tool is josh you can let me know if anybody knows we'll give you a minute yeah they're uh, thinking right now outside of the htv world i don't know if many people would uh would know so this this tool is for wrapping cars with film. Um, choose to wrap around the door handles. Bought it on Amazon. It came with a kit of a bunch of cool stuff that I use in my shop. But this definitely um, works awesome to press down in that seam while the HTV is still hot. Before I had this, I would just run my fingernail right down it. And you can see how nice, not sure if you can see, yeah, you can how see. nice that HTV has set down in that seam while it's still warm. Yeah, we'll give you a close-up of the finished results so everybody can see it, but it's really seated nice in there, making good contact on all sides of that inside seam. So now we got the red, our finishing touch here. We're going to put the red in there, line it up. And with this one, because we have the exposed HTV on top and bottom with our platen, I've got a little cover sheet here. We're going to throw this cover sheet on. We're going to hit this one, and this will be the full seven seconds which I think Ecofilm is actually 10 seconds, yeah. but. You can cheat a little bit when you're doing hats, right? Yeah, we're gonna cheat a little bit. 
And then what I like to do is because we shorted it a little time, we're just gonna give it one more two second press. Got it, we have a completed result. So let's uh, give you a close up here. Um, you can see the way it seats down in the seam, the original logo, the finished result on a Richardson 112. And if we just pan a little bit um, to the left, we'll see kind of the secret sauce here that you've done with the 360 IQ. So talk a little bit about your setup, because here's what's important. You can decorate the Richardson 112 with top and bottom heat for like flex style emblems and embroidered patches. But because we're doing HTV needs a little more pressure, you've done this. Right. Setup. So like I said, we, we've turned the bottom heat off because we're not doing a flex style or an embroidered patch where you need that heat from the bottom. So when I'm doing HTV or even like um ultra color max yeah um i've taken the quarter inch thick foam pad that's supplied with the 360 and i've cut it to the same shape as the black part of the silicone cap i think i like the give because if you were going to smash it down really hard without it having a little give at least in my preference if you smash it down and something shifts you've only got that little bit of space Right. between no contact and full contact. This gives you a little play in that contact to soften yeah, soften the application process. So great secret tip. If you want to step back around, we'll sure. switch back to our main camera and reset to, to get some close-ups of some of the looks. So uh, secrets to doing the uh, Richardson 112 with the 360 IQ or any hat press is building up that area. Skip has showed you a technique to do that, even to the point where we can I mean, we locked that thing down, I don't know, six times on this hat by the time we yeah. preheated and everything yep. without damaging the cap. Yeah, and we, we set it up and preheated it a couple times before we even went live. And there's no creases, there's no marks, no nothing on it. And I bet you we pressed that hat 10 or 12 times before we just actually pressed the hat. So possible and it's durable. So want to get unique with your design, skips customer demands uh, vinyl for some application because they like the aesthetic of it. But there's also a different way to do multicolor design. So we've shown you the vinyl look. Let's uh, come in close here and show you another way. So uh, this result that we're looking at here, a lot of gradients, a lot of colors in it, just a different option to approach it. How was this one done? Um, this is Ultra Color Max, um, done for IHRA. I have, I have friends in the NASCAR and drag racing business. So that's another avenue that I've gone down with my heat press apparel business. Um, this is for their 50th anniversary this past summer, and they wanted a full color logo and to keep the cost down instead of embroidery or even we could have gone permatwill, but there's a lot of fine detail in there. And that Ultra Color Max brings out that fine detail and gave them an awesome looking hat for their 50th anniversary. Excellent. We're going to work with Ultra Color Max a little bit later in a unique application. Let's show you another application or two with Ultra Color Max. This one right over the seam. Yeah, this one... Um, this was actually for a friend of mine who is associated with the band Metallica. Um, this is actually an illustration of James Hetfield's actual tattoos that he has on his hands. Nice. So my buddy re-illustrated it and set it up for some t-shirts and hats for an event we did um, a couple months ago. So it was just a cool, unique um, design for some, for some hats. And again, the Ultra Color Max with the detail in the multiple colors in there, it works flawlessly, it's perfect. Yeah, and so we've done a lot of six panels, a lot of low profile stuff that we're seeing here. Um, I know we shared this one before in our mm -hmm. Facebook group, Heat Press for Profit, but I love this one on this five panel foam trucker. Yeah, this one is quite unique because this is for a brewery in Michigan and they tout that they have million dollar sunsets off their back porch. And you can see in the logo, the detail, the backdrop is actually one of their sunsets. So that is an actual photo taken off from their porch. And then the artwork was done for me. Um, there was customer supplied artwork and we all know your transfers are only as good as your artwork sometimes. Right. Yeah, right? That, that's the truth. Um, and this artwork was spot on and the detail in the clouds, in the sun, in the sunset and the clouds and everything is unbelievable. Yeah, so photo quality, possible, right over the seam, six panel, five panel, low profile, high crown foam, doesn't matter. 
It's all possible. You just have to know the proper tools and techniques, which is what we're trying to do today is teach you that here with the Hat Master Skip Davis. Hey, guys, we're broadcasting live. So if you have questions, uh, we definitely want you to share those. We're going to go in live and uh, take one now. Uh, someone would like to know, how do you stop the rim of the hat from getting uh, damaged? So I think we're talking about the actual bill and getting the indent mark from the press. Yeah, so I've seen a couple people use the gray silicone application pad okay. and setting it over top of the um, over top of the brim. So if it's sitting on the press like this, they set it down. Yeah, and we'll show you that pad later. They yep. set it. They set it down here, so when the top platen comes down, it doesn't scrape on here. Um, I'm pretty meticulous in the work that I do and I'm not going to throw a hat up on there unless it's in the right position. And you saw when we did that one, I didn't have it in the right spot and we lost a little adhesion there on, yeah. the, on the top hook. So you can get away without using the gray application pad to protect it. It's just an extra step, a little bit more time to ensure that you're not damaging that hat. Excellent. Um, great question. And then James also asked, what sort of pressure are you using when you're applying the types of designs that we've been through so far? So we've talked in the forums on Facebook and stuff recently about pressure settings. Pressure settings on a 16 by 20 yeah. are way different than a pressure setting on a three by five hat platen. The smaller the platen, the less pressure technically needed right. to achieve the same outcome. So a pressure of six on here and a pressure of six on a hat press, the pressure of six on a hat press is going to be way over the top more than what you actually need on a hat press. So I'm going to guess most of my pressing on the 360 falls between a four and a five. Okay. You don't launder hats as often. Not that you don't need that extra pressure, but you can get away with less pressure, especially if you're layering like we just did. You want to keep that pressure down from melting or some HTV shrinks a little bit yeah. with multiple presses. So the lower temp and the lower pressure alleviates some of those issues. Okay, excellent. So uh, we've covered some flat applications, vinyl uh, transfers, all possible with top heat only. Uh, when we start to talk about patches and uh, products like flex style that we don't want to come off, I know we recommend coming with bottom heat as well as top heat to get the adhesion. Right. Is that how this look was done with flex style? We'll show a close up of yeah, that as the, well. That flex style was done on the 360 um, at the recommended uh, temp and time. Um, it escapes me right now. Yeah, 320. 320, 320 on bottom, 280. That's it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, in the flex style with the eighth inch pad, they go on so easy. Now, with the flex style too, you have different choices. You've got flat, textured, domed, all these crazy options yeah, in yeah, flex style. Yeah. I've found that the flat with textured option mm -hmm. gives you the thinnest emblem. So you get a little bit more pliability. And also with that pliability, with it being the thinnest emblem, it's a little bit easier, less time, less pressure on the 360 IQ with that choice of flex style. Yeah. The thicker, the fl thicker flex styles, Need a little bit longer dwell time, need a little bit heavier pressure. Possible here. Yes. And I love um, that you're experimenting with different placements. So not only uh, center of the hat, but that sort of left panel, right panel look. Um, and not only are you doing caps, but I know one of the more popular topics that we have out there is, especially in this season, in the Northeast where we are here, is pressing the uh, beanies. Because yes. sometimes those are constructed of acrylic and acrylic and heat, they really don't mix. Yes, it's very hard to find a beanie that is not acrylic yeah. or a mix of acrylic and polyester. Sanmar sells a nice 100% cotton beanie. It is a reg it is like a scully beanie, not with a fold on it. Most of your folded style beanies are going to be acrylic. Yeah. And so we're going to conquer a beanie today because we can't escape this live session with Skip without showing you his uh, beanie technique, which is taking over all corners of the internet here. And so we're going to press uh, flex style, which is the dimensional emblem and patch that we've just shown you on the prior hat uh, onto an acrylic beanie. And there is some specific technique uh, to do this. And believe it or not, we're not going to use the Hotronics 360 IQ heat press for this. We're going to set up on the Hotronics Fusion heat press to do this. So, so just to your point, why we're not using... Yeah, why Why aren't we using Why it? we're not using the 360. And I'm sure a lot of people that have the 360 or even any other hat press has come to find out acrylic doesn't like the heat. Yeah. 
and especially doesn't like the heat when you stretch it. Okay, I got it. Okay. Okay, so stretching it adds another hurdle to pressing acrylic beanies without a scorch or a melt if it gets to be that bad. So if we were to put it on the 360, mm -hmm. we have to stretch it over the lower platen, which stretches out the elastic. As soon as you hit that with heat, that elasticity, it goes. It's staying deformed it, like that, right? It stays stretched out. Okay. You get that weird football-shaped mm -hmm. look, and it just doesn't stretch back. So I had to come up with a way that I could press, because you can't tell your customers no. Yeah. I had to come up with a way that we can press acrylic beanies on a flat press. Well, show us the way, Hat Master. Okay. Let's do <laughs> yeah. You're going to need this, right? Yep. So okay. what I came up with is... I'm going to have you step over oh, here okay. so we can get a nice angle of you. What I came up with is we're going to press these in reverse. In reverse, I mean upside down. But first, I think the secret, most of all, is... We got to have something hard or semi semi rigid underneath the beanie for this adhesive to really to get some pressure on there, right? To really yeah. bite into this, um, we don't want to throw it on there like this because you see how much see how much movement we have. We got lots of off contact, mm -hmm. I guess we'd call it. Um, so we're going to use just a regular piece of cardboard, and like I showed in my video from home. It's slightly smaller this way and slightly smaller this way. More so slightly smaller this way so we can let that top edge roll over the cardboard because that top edge, even if you do get a little shine or a little melt, that top edge is what's really going to show because it's going to thin out. It's going to flatten. Right where the fold is. Right yeah. where the fold is. If you hit that with heat, it's going to take that nice fluffy fold and smash it right down to something thin. And that's when you can really tell you could look at a beanie and say, oh, that's been hat pressed because you can see that top line being smashed down. All right. So, so before you Go do ahead. this, I'm going to pause for mm -hmm. a quick, because I want to make sure we get Adrian's comment. Okay. Have successfully pressed hundreds of acrylic beanies with Skip's process. Thank you. So thank you on behalf of Adrian and everybody watching. I appreciate and we're going to help you. But first, we're going to play a game. You ever play the game where they start showing you little bits of the photo and you got to guess what the full photo is? Okay. So we're going to play a game for all of our viewers at home. See if you can guess this brand from the cardboard box that Skip has used. Oh, yeah. Right? Okay. So Joe, <laughs> no, our video guy's raising his hand. But anyways, I just thought that'd be fun. So go ahead and, and okay. show us what happens next. Okay. So this is a process. Pretty simple. We're going to place the cardboard inside and in... we're not all the way down. Because we don't want to, we don't want a hard edge on the bottom either to okay. smash. So you're like centering it more or less. Yeah, I cut it according to my fold because some of the folds are a little bit smaller, some of them are taller, and you can see we're back from the edge. That's to protect this edge, and we're back from this edge, and that's to protect that front edge. So now we're going to turn this around this way, and we're going to let it hang off the edge. This way now, when the upper plant hits this, this top edge isn't going to get affected by the heat because we're going to rest it on the cardboard. So we've got our flex style patch. We've got this twisted pretty much all the way up because believe it or not, which is light pressure, light, super light yeah, pressure, yeah. like almost to the point where your fusion's in a little bit better shape than mine at home. <laughs> my, <laughs> pressure, for a new one. my pressure's probably a little different. So I've adjusted this one to the best of my feel. So this one's actually probably only going to read one on the pressure where mine at home reads a three or a four because it's six, seven years old and it's loosened up a little bit. So we've got the cardboard in there. We're going to take the flex style patch, cover on. We're going to eyeball this one. And I think our settings are at 310 for 40 seconds. And here's here's the, the secret also. Flex style, embroider patches, we use the uh, the foam pads. Not only does it help adhere the emblems, but it also is going to protect that acrylic. Um, we're going to do another acrylic beanie later, Okay. and we're not going to use this. We're going to use the gray application pad because it's not a flex style patch, but that's a secret. Okay. We're well, yeah, later. we'll show you that. That's our grand finale. So we're going to put this on here, and hopefully my pressure is right. We're going to pull it down here. Yeah, see, we're only we're only reading like a zero between a zero and a one. It's toggling. It is. Um, and like I said, it's it's a lot of trial and error. It took me. I've I've melted quite a few beanies 
getting to where I knew what the settings would be for flex style versus embroidered patches versus flock perma twill. I've done all those on acrylic beanies. Yeah. Well, we teach you here so they don't have to. That's right. right. And so that we can show you the way. Go right out and do it. Jump right in. Maybe you'll ruin a couple, but not as many with getting the technique. I still have a pile of ruined hats. Yeah. So, I mean, everybody ruins hats. It's the yeah. only way you learn. So we should be um, coming up here on time. Yep. I have a question while you're doing this. Sure. Could we possibly do like, I don't know, maybe four or five beanies at once if we stacked them around the edge? Um, I'm sure you could. I've never attempted that. Okay. That'll change the pressure, obviously, because we're isolated right here on the pressure. Yes, you're getting old. Yep. So if you're adding one over here or over here, yep. that pressure is just going to have to be varied. Okay. And, and actually, the temperature might even vary a little bit, too, because you're using more of the heat. So let's check out and see what we got here. I'm going to pull this off. I can tell it's on there just by how it's released. It's on there. And you want to know what? We do have a little bit of shine from the cardboard, um, probably because my pressure isn't the same yeah. as my pressure at home. But... You have, my, you, you, have my, a, you have a Skip Davis tool for that, don't you? I have you? a special, a special tool. What we're going to do is we're going to let it, yeah. we're going to let it cool for a minute. But honestly, no, no smash on the top edge, no smash on the bottom edge. And actually, as you let it cool, that shine's going away. Yeah. So we had a little bit of shine there initially, just from the pressure on the cardboard. But now that it's sitting and cooling down, that shine's going away. Okay, and we'll bring the tool over this way so you can show the technique to kind of clean it up a little bit. And for those that said Port Authority, you got the box right. Thanks for playing along. So I've got another mystery tool here. Anybody? It's a little uh, kind of really looks coarse. like a pipe cleaner. Yeah, it's like a pipe cleaner. I think it's for water bottle um, straws. Yeah, like the metal straws, right? Yep. Okay. Very tough bristle. So a lot of times, if you do have a little bit of shine. You can take one of these and you can just very lightly, and you might not even need to do it. I'm a little, you know, OCD about how things go out of the shop. If you pull that nap back up, it takes care of that shine. Yeah, so little little we're detail. Not, we're not pulling hairs up. We're not stretching it. We're not snagging it or anything like that. We're just, you're almost hiding the shine. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you are. You're, you're almost fooling. You're blending it. Yeah. Yeah, just it's, like you would with carpet. And I, I can't even. I mean, if you're I, I real think it's pretty much gone. Yeah, it, I can't it was, see it. It was there when we first pulled it off, but it's gone now. And it's and it's on there. You can see it stretches around it, but you're not pulling away from it. And that's that's why I mentioned the flat texture because look at look at the look at the pliability of that emblem. Excellent, excellent. So uh, let's head back over to the table. Okay. Um, want to kind of recap where we're at so far? We're only at like a one or two pressure. Yes, because that longer dwell time takes the place of a higher pressure. Right? Wow. Yeah, yeah. You extend the dwell time. Extend and the dwell time, less that adhesive, heat up a little bit slower than smashing it down at a heavy pressure for half the dwell time. Awesome. So if you're getting value out of this, give us some feedback here. Let us know what tip you like the best. Uh, maybe what questions you have for Skip about decorating headwear or really anything when it comes to apparel decoration. We're going to take your questions live. We're about halfway through our session today, and we still have quite a bit left to show you. And I know uh, the next project we're going to move into is going to uh, blow people's mind with what they can do. But first, uh, let's let's take some questions. So uh, some of this is trial and errors. Yeah, grab your water. So uh, we're working, Skip. We got multiple camera angles. He's, he's used to shooting from home. He walked into Stull's TV. I'm, I'm feeling the pressure today here. Yeah, yeah, lots of pressure. Got to got to cool down a little bit. So um, got some questions, lots of questions coming in. All right, let's take one. Leather patches. Sometimes the bottom of the patch doesn't seem to adhere with the 360 IQ. Do you have much experience with leather patches? I have no experience with well, leather patches. Okay, I do. <laughs> okay. And it's so, funny, somebody asked me the other day about leather patches and adhering leather patches. And as weird as it may sound, I haven't had one person in my area specifically ask me for leather patches. So I don't know if it's just my area, my demographic, or what, but I, I've never pressed a leather patch on a hat or anything else. Okay, so <laughs> we just, we just, we're gonna do something right now. 
So as a thank you to Skip for coming, we're going to donate uh, an order of 25 wow. leather patches to Skip awesome. and his top target client's logo or existing customer's Sweet. logo and just report back and say how they responded to it. Perfect. Them. Give them a freebie. I can give a little guess on the bottom. Go for it. Not heating. Um, in my experience, even outside of the HTV world and pressing world, I could see leather, if it's being laser cut, around, laser cut like the perimeter for the shape, it curling a little bit, maybe, coming off from the laser? No? Nah, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, it could, maybe in you certain applications. Because but... I know sometimes with the, the, how do you say it, marrowed or marrowed edge? Marrowed edge, yeah. Mm -hmm. On um, embroidered patches. Yep. It's tough to get that outer edge adhered to because of that that stitched edge. Because it wants to, the adhesive is not all the way to the outside. And it, it's tough to get through that thick edging. And, and that's a good point. So um, just to address that on the embroidered patches, uh, a couple tips. One is when you're decorating headwear, start by curving that embroidered patch. Oh, the tube thing you yeah, showed. Yeah, the toilet paper core, right? And so you get that curve shape to it. And then also definitely use your thermo tape on leather and embroidered patches, especially if they're wide, um, to tape them and hold them into place. That way, when they come off of the bottom heat, they're not instantly, as soon as the press opens, wanting to go back to flat. Gotcha. Right? Because so leather's you, rather rigid. A little more rigid. Gotcha. Same with 3D embroidered patches or embroidered patches. However, you know, the most basic thing I think of is just make sure the sweatband's flipped out. Sounds kind of basic, but a lot of people miss that because mm -hmm. maybe the heat's not traveling through and hitting the bottom of your patch. I, I see a lot, too, is goes back to maybe some design work too is a lot of logos being applied super close to the brim right and that's talking about the, the sweatband being flipped out and the heat not getting down that low so maybe scale back the size of the artwork in the patches to give a little bit more room on that bottom edge and before the brim what do you recommend for max height i like to stay because whether you're going center of the hat or left panel height's going to dictate everything in my eyes mm -hmm. um i like to stay 2.25, maybe 2.375 tall, but I don't generally go any taller than two and three eighths center or side. Can go a little bit more on the side because you're not getting that tough curve on the front of the hat. You get a yeah. little less um, curve on the side, but yeah, two and a quarter, two and three eighths. Yep, yep, and that would match. I think you could technically do up to two and a half, but I don't recommend it. There's I space for two and a half, but two and a quarter safe because it gives you a little margin for error as well. Sometimes logos look weird that big. Yeah, like depending they, on it. Yeah, yeah, depending on what the shape is. I mean, if it's like square or a big circle, going two and a half is is pretty big. <laughs> okay, great. So let's peek in for a couple more questions before we jump back into what we've prepped for you. Um, so Thomas says he does two and a half all the time. Works great. Awesome, Thomas. Keep going. You uh, have competitive advantage. Uh, over some shops. Um, same question as Kaylee. So I need to find Kaylee's question, Shauna, if you can highlight that one for me. Uh, I can't hear you. Can you just give it to me? Oh, how to avoid creasing. Yeah, Kaylee asks how to avoid creasing with side application on hats. So I'm going to go back to my little... Um, this piece? My little quarter-inch pad that I've cut to go on top of there. The creasing is technically from space between the hat and the lower plat. And yes, as you spin the hat from side to side on the 360, it doesn't sit as nicely as it does face on. Yeah. So you get this little give. So can I yeah, yeah, we'll bring a camera angle up to you. And actually, let's, uh, can you load this cap to show us how it works as part yeah, of it? Let's, and... let's load it without it. Yep. Show them the gap. Perfect. So if we put this on here without, without the little pad underneath, let's flip this out. And depends on the hat too, the profile of the hat. Dad hats, unstructured hats, really no issue with space because they don't have the buckram behind there to keep it, um, to keep it stiff like the structured hats. So I see. See yep. the space we got, yep. and this is where I can assume. Everybody talks about the crease running vertical right up next to the seam is what I've seen a lot. Okay. And that's from when this comes down, you get a little bunch because of the space. Okay. And yeah, we can work it. How much time do you want to spend working every single hat for this? So yeah, we've got that space. Let's check this out. Let's put this on here. 
And obviously, when you add this, you have to adjust your uh, pressure. Pressure, yeah. pressure settings. So we're just clearing the sweat band now. Yep, a little bit more difficult with the side because it wants to slide that piece of foam in there. So like you always do, we get it on there. We give it a little two second press. Help stretch that hat. How much of that gap have we taken away? Oh wow, there, we're lucky if there's a 16th, if anything, maybe a 32nd inch gap there. And it's, and it's more still over towards this seam, but another little work around and some more heat. And look, you've got that gap pretty much gone. And that's where that crease comes from. That crease comes from that gap between the underneath side of the hat and the top plan. Excellent. So Casey, hopefully that answers. Yeah, she says, thank you. Or Kaylee, I'm sorry, answers your uh, question. I will say uh, as well, if you're using bottom heat, sometimes you can get away without the pad because it's warming it and you can kind of conform it a little easier. But if it's top heat only, I could see where the pad yep. makes a ton in, of sense. And the pad is strictly my preference because i come from a world of building up your lower platen yeah how, how many years have you been doing that realistically eight eight yeah so you're it's building, worked for building you. up the lower platen yeah over eight years until the 360 came along so i i think it's just ingrained in my brain okay so let's do this while you have that up there okay um we're going to uh we're going to show you how to make these the way. yeah this little... has been a good topic of conversation over the last uh last month or so so first let's talk about just high level what these are, and then we'll actually press it to a cap. I'll hold them for everybody here. Sure. So I had um, a client, a brewery in Michigan, reach out to me over the summer. I got a chance to start doing their hats for them. So, and that's actually the million dollar sunset hat. But they also wanted to tag the hats, brand tag the hats on the side. So we needed to come up with a way to make some tags. We went down some other avenues tried to look into digitally printing on soft foam to give it a little bit more dimension. Um, that wasn't going to suffice. It wasn't doable. So I had to come up with a way to get a tag made for these hats, but preferably I wanted to be able to make it in house. Okay. I wanted to be able to change the colors, make them in house, not have to wait for shipping times. So this is the final product, but what we actually have here is we've got either flock or silicone dye block HTV with ultra color max applied to it to create these custom tags. So we're going to show you exactly how to do that in a second. Um, we're going to start with kind of the finished result first. Let's pick one and just press it to this cap so we can show them how it works. Let's let's make a big one. Oh, you want to make a big we'll one? We'll leave this on here. It's your yeah. show, man. Yeah, I'm just I'm just here to, yeah, to facilitate let's, it. Let's, let's, show, <laughs> let's show them the process and we'll take one of the big ones. We'll leave this head on here because that's where it's going to go. Yep. And then we'll press a big one on Okay, perfect. So I'm going to clear the table. I know this is this feels like kind of like a cooking show here. Like I know, right? pull the stuff out from underneath you get any at all. And now we're going to teach you how to make your own patch on demand utilizing stuff that you can easily access. HTV product like Flock and silicone dye block and then kind of mixed media with Ultra Color Max on top. So stage is set. Let's make it happen. Okay, so this was basically made out of necessity. Um, I thought to myself, how can I make these tags? What would make a cool tag? Um, so flock makes an awesome tag because of the nature of flock. Mm -hmm. It's a felt based material. It looks nice. It feels nice. So originally I started with flock. Um, and then we progressed to the silicone dye block. So basically what we have here is we have some ultra color max laid out in grid form. Um, single color, double color, could be full color. And then we've got some pieces of silicone dye block in flock. Okay, and I'm just going to catch everybody up just in case they don't know the product name. So Ultra Color Max is Stahl's manufactured direct-to-film transfer. So right. Skip uploaded his logos, received these uh, just like this, ready to trim apart and press. Yep. And then the HTV products are Stahl's rolls of vinyl. Right. And you just sourced them both in black and trimmed them to size. Yeah, most a lot of the stuff that I've recently done for this tag application required a black background, but I mean, any color mix any, and match mix and match or whatever. And that's, what's cool about it. Because if you're going to load up a sheet of 
ultra color max, half of them can be white, half of them can be black, and then you can alternate the back, the background color um, on it. So the, the questions recently when I've been posting about these tags is, how are you getting the ultra color max down onto the flock or silicone dye block prior to pressing it on the hats without activating the adhesive on either of the two HTVs? Right. So this is what we're going to do. We've got the Teflon cover sheet. I'm going to grab you a loose one. We don't need. We, we need you just want to use this yeah, one. Yeah, we we'll use this one. You got um, it. You're not going to ruin it, are you? I hope not. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so we know Teflon. We use it to manage our threading. Right. But also because nothing sticks to it. Yeah, non-stick. Non-stick. So we're going to peel the flock and the silicone dye block. So you're actually removing the carrier that I'm comes gonna, on. I'm gonna take the carrier off because we need the adhesive side that is carrier side to Basically, be down. We need to get to the print side, We need basically. to get to the print side, yeah. Sorry, I said that backwards. That's all right. So we're gonna peel these. Okay. So now we've got face up flock, face up silicone dye block. Teflon sheet. We're going to put the, and when you're going to do this, I move my top platen out of the way. We want this bottom one to be cold. Okay. Because um, we don't want to overheat the adhesive. Yeah, we're pretty cool other than that corner. Yeah, we don't want to overheat the adhesive um, prematurely mm -hmm. before it goes to final application. So we got some silicone dye blocks. So you're laying them just right on here. We're laying them right on here. All right. <laughs> Making me nervous now, Skip. Really? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, come on. This is like a $60 cover. Yeah, mine's got holes in the corner of it from pushing so many t-shirts and sweatshirts over it. I'll <laughs> trade you. I'll send you mine. Oh, there you go. And I can have this one. I think we can figure that out. Okay. So you're laying the Ultra Color Max, the full panel right on top of it. Full panel right on top of it. So the big one's going on, the silicone dye block. Small Contrast. ones. Yep. No, no worry about position. Just lay it there. Nope, because... These, I actually cut these apart by hand after the fact, so that's why they're in a nice grid form. Makes it easier to cut apart. Um, exacto knife in a straight edge. So we're okay. going to put these on there, and then we're going to grab... I know with Ultra Color Max, we don't need a cover sheet. Um, I don't know why I use a cover sheet. I like using the cover sheet. Well, it kind of flattens it, too, just in case. It does, because yeah. when you peel yeah. when you peel the carrier off both of the things, especially the silicone dye block, it wants to roll. So we're going to push this on here, and... What's the application on this one? I normally run it at about 300. We're at 310. Okay. I don't think we're going to have an issue. Um, we'll just shorten the dwell time a little bit, because all we're doing is tacking. How many seconds do you want? we are do like four seconds, because all we're doing is tacking this Ultra Color Max down to either the silicone dye block or the flock. All right, and we good? You set the pressure already, right? I hope it's right. All right, we're going to give oh, it yeah, a go. Let's do it. All right, four seconds. That's super quick. I'll take this off here. You ready? I'm ready. Wow. I never, like, like, the flock I can, I can understand, I never ever would have predicted on top of the rubbery silicone dye block, that easy of an application in a release. Like the release aspect of it? Yeah, just, I would have thought maybe you'd be like babysitting the edges on the peel or. So I got to my four seconds cause I tried it at like two seconds. Yeah. And I've had some of the finer detail pull up, especially on the beards one, because tell you what, that's some that's tiny. That's pretty fine, yeah. That's some tiny, and then what I like to do, just to give it without the carrier sheet on top of it, get a little bit more heat. Um, and this is literally down and back up so just, just to help set that, it. help set that ultra color max. And I'll check it out. Yeah. You want to make sure it doesn't stick to itself though, right? Cause it's still a little warmer. Is it melt to where you see any shine on the edges? Like it didn't squeeze out the adhesive or anything. I mean, just enough. <laughs> so you can see. You can see the inside of the pig. Yeah. How it's not necessarily fully fully bonded. Bonded. Yeah. yeah. That all goes away 
Once you hit it on once the hat press. Once you hit it on the hat press or hit it on a beanie. So here's here's the exact tag out of the silicone die block applied to an acrylic beanie. And you can see just like the flex style, it's not going anywhere. And it's definitely on, here. on the beanie. All right. So show the technique for cutting these apart because I know I'm not very good with scissors. So well, me cutting I'm straight lines, not happening. not even going to use scissors. Okay. Um, I guess we didn't think ahead. I don't have a straight edge. That's all right. Credit, I can find credit, you a straight edge. Credit card. Let's or... take, go ahead and take a couple questions okay. while I'm finding a straight edge for you. Let's see. Pressure for the custom tags on either the flock or the silico silicone die block is literally like zero to two, um, depending on your press. My press at home is a couple years older than what we're working with here. So it's probably got less pressure than what it's actually reading. So at home, my pressure reads three, but here it was reading zero. Yeah. So basically just like the weight of the platinum. Is. And I can see a clamshell being a little bit different because it's not hovering and coming right down. You've got that extra. Yeah. You should even, a one on a clamshell should be about the equivalent. So what I do is I just, um, I just take these. That's a straight edge, exacto knife, nice cutting mat. And I just trim them. I, you know, no real value to the to the border size or whatever. <laughs> Guys, this is awesome. Dana says, shut the front door. Skip is a wizard. Double <laughs> exclamation point. A lot of people have been waiting for this um, explanation as to. How are we getting the Ultra Color Max on the substrate underneath without ruining the adhesive? Yeah, and, and so um, another question is, what's so special about the silicone dye block? So in your mind, why do you like that product? So I just recently tested it on the beanies for this client, like literally in the last week and a half. I've been using the flock as a go-to. We've done flock on the side of the hats with the mesh. We did some flock on um some gloves i love this for application the same yeah killer application uh for the same brewery in michigan they want to be able to sell gloves to people at their winter beer festivals because their hands get cold and they've actually had people asking them about gloves so now we're able to provide them with a branded glove um i love so look this is the silicone dye block yeah so he's gonna get your camera on so you guys can see it here so you get that flex that stretch and recovery to it and the feel it's rubbery the right? feel of the rubber yeah. reminds you of like a Nike logo or an Adidas or an Under Arm logo that has that rubbery silicone. Now it's not super thick. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's still very thin. You don't have the dimension to it like a foam, which I'm sure this application would work on foam as well. I've yet to try it on foam, but I don't see, I don't see why it wouldn't work on foam. So let's cut. Okay. Do you want to? Yeah, I got one. Let's head over to the heat press. You want to come around this way? Yep. And actually I'm going to grab. Oh. Uh, Becky asked where you get your gloves while you're setting up for that. Um, Sanmar has the gloves. Um, if you just type in gloves in the search engine, the first one that comes up, I want to say the product code is like STA01. What's really cool about the gloves is all the fingers and thumb have the special thread in them to where you can still use them with your cell phone. Yeah, so you see that uh, in the glove construction. I think you said these are a little less than a few bucks for the actual glove itself. They're under three bucks a cut into strips. We pull the ecofilm off. All right, let me get rid of this. I feel like I'm offending you by having the thermo tape out. <laughs> I've never bought thermo film okay. ever. Okay. Um, because you always have scraps, right? Right. So why spend your money on upcycle? Let's go. Tape? No, just kidding. Um, so I take the thermal tape, or not the thermal tape. It's the mask. The mask, the carrier. Holds it into place. Yep. Okay. So let's just check. We got our hat on here. Let's give it a little warm up and we're going to be, we're 291. We'll roll with the, two, we'll roll with the 291. What would you like it to be? I mean, obviously we're on live, but what would you prefer it would be for people doing this at home? 305 to 310. Okay. But I think the 290 for what we're doing here is going to work. Um, let's bump the time. What I love about this is, as I'm thinking about it, is like, 
great for businesses, yes, but can like with this, you can do variable data. Like you can do a, a name or a number or so a we, photo or whatever. We, we've already, I've already taken an order and I haven't processed them yet. We're gonna do the same size for this place on the silicone dye block and they're gonna go on flannel shirts right above the pocket. Perfect. It's gonna look awesome. Yeah, nice We've little- We've done woven patches for them on flannel before. And after they saw the beanies, they said, can we do that same rubberized silicone on the flannel? And they were, yeah, 100%. So we've got it held in place. We're gonna center this right in here. And actually, because we've only tacked the Ultra Color Max, the 290 will work well with the Ultra Color Max. Okay. Um, we're going on there. So I bumped it to 10 seconds. Yep, and we're just using top heat only, Karen, on this. The bottom platen is turned completely off. Skip showed you the technique earlier in the video to hit this print location without creasing. 10 seconds, hot peel on that carrier. Love it, let me check that out. Beautiful. Wow. Great contact. I mean, high-end branding. And the power of this is like we're getting the dimension on there. We're getting the rubberized feel. Like it's it's very high-end. And when I think about this, it's like we ship this Ultra Color Max. If you order by noon, it ships next business day. You can have the silicone dye block or the flock, whatever it is, on hand. Mm -hmm. And so you can establish a quick turn patch program to move headwear out the door and for those customers. What's, at one. what's one of your favorite phrases? Oh, I don't know. I have a lot of favorite phrases. Give it to me. Higher perceived value. Higher perceived value. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Because them, they get in their hands. It looks good. It's super crisp, super clean, great detail. But the feel, they, they get their hands on it and they get that rubber feel and that little bit of dimension from the silicone dye block. It's, yeah. it's awesome. It's my souvenir, right? Sure. Got to join the hat master, put on a cap for the rest of this video. Come back on uh, behind here and let's do a... Let's do a recap. Let's do a little Q&A first. Okay. Um, so the webinar will be available for replay. Uh, for some reason, you're having audio or video or internet connection issues. Don't worry. This is recorded. You can go back into uh, Webinar Jam. It'll be for replay, and it'll also hit our YouTube channel uh, within the next several weeks here after we edit it all up and publish it for you. Um, questions? Let's see. How will I hold it to washing on the flannel? Um, I've yet to press the silicone dye block tags on the flannel. But if you're confident in your application process and the time and the temp and everything is within spec, I don't foresee any issues with... Well, I'm highly confident because we guarantee um, 50 wash cycles on all these HTV materials. So the only thing I would want to test would be the bond between the HTV itself and the UC Max gotcha. to make sure those two won't separate. But as far as like adhering the silicone to the flannel, no problem. And the at silicone all. dye block is very flexible too. It lends itself well to not being stiff like a patch or something on the flannel because you want, you know, putting HTV, which silicone dye block is technically HTV, but putting an HTV logo like Ecofilm or Premium Plus doesn't have that flannel quality appearance to it that's why these look so well you amazing. get the coverage right and i was you just do. i was just at a show a couple weeks ago and people were walking around checking out our samples and you know what the most popular sample was it was a simple i mean not simple but it's a patch so something like this on a sherpa fabric so i saw that yeah think about covering textures mm -hmm. uh, like flannel i've and, done micro fleece um vests and yeah. micro fleece jackets. And what I'm really looking forward to come holiday season is I sell a lot of soft shell jackets mm -hmm. to corporations for corporate gifts to their employees. These silicone dye block tags are going to look awesome on soft shell jackets because the soft shell has that rubbery feel. Yeah. And then just adding another dimension of, like you said, higher perceived value with these tags. Can't beat it. All right. Let's take about, I think we got time for a, a few questions. Um, so, Suze, Susanna asks, the same as Laura, have you tried this process on thicker beanies? So how thick have you went on like any cable knit or any, have you experienced with any of those? No, I have not. Okay, so something to try guys. And so here's what I want you to take from this is, and I use, I've used this story before, but I wanna illustrate it again. Uh, there is a book that I've read called The Dip and it's by an author, uh, Seth Godin. And Seth Godin writes basically, 
um, you need to get through the dip. And the dip where is a lot of people will give up on something and they'll quit. But it's worth pushing through that dip sometimes in order to be number one in your field. And so what we've seen here, and, and Skip's generous enough to share the ideas out there with the community, which we appreciate, um, we've seen like exclusive ways to make products and decorate products that can be, bring real business value. He's already done all the testing and taking it through there. So take these concepts, try it on a cable knit beanie, try it on uh, a Sherpa fabric, try it on something different that will appeal to your customer base. I'm confident you can have the tools and the concepts here to really craft that value uh, for your customer. So it's not just perceived, it's actual. They're going to care about it and they're going to pay for it. Yeah. And I, I tell a lot of people when they reach out to me via Facebook uh, Messenger and stuff like that is um, trial and error are your best friends. Yeah. You're going to, if, if you're going to order some things, order a couple cheap hats, order a couple cheap beanies, spend the money to buy one or two and to test it to see if it works. Because nine times out of 10, you get everybody says, hey, has anybody tried this? Nine times out of 10, nobody's probably tried it if you're thinking out of the box. So it's yeah. up to you to take the initiative to create something new to set yourself apart from everybody else that might be doing it in your community or pushing pushing products too. And also it goes back to the idea of if, if your customer, because I'm a hat guy, we all know that, giving a hat away to a client when they only order t-shirts or hoodies, because I guarantee you if the hat looks good and it's something cool, they're going to call you and order some hats. Well, you can make one of these for a client. Yeah. Like you could flood a sheet. So, know. so I ordered a full, they had, tw they ordered 20 beanies. So I only needed 20. Okay. Ultra color max. I was able to get 105 of them on the 20 by 20 sheet. For like 25, for 30 20, bucks. 25, 30 bucks. So, I mean, yes, I've got extras, but I know they're going to order more. So they're already sitting at the house. Now I don't have to reorder. And the cost, if you really break it down, even with shipping and stuff, minus your time to cut apart and press, what are you looking at? 50 cents? I'd say 50 cents, 50 cents all cents in. per tag? Yeah. Yeah, 50 cents all in. Awesome. Okay. So Susanna says, thanks for sharing your knowledge. So incredibly appreciative. Um, let's see. What was the time and pressure on the hat application uh, for the tags? So Matt asked that. And then if you want to scroll down a little bit, Vince, so I can get a look at some of these other questions. For the Oh, for the gloves. Let's get that from Laura. Did you use the flat press for the gloves or the 360? Same same process for the gloves as I did. You have those little did with that, the right? with, Did with the beanie. Um, so everybody asked me too when I post about the gloves is how does it hold up to once you stretch it and put it on your hand? Well, I pre-stretch them. That way, once the tag goes down, it'll... Bunch the tag up a little bit. That way, when you go to put it on, the stretch is actually actual. It's appropriate for you wearing it. Yeah. So what I did was, there's two different sizes of gloves. There's a small, medium, and a large, extra large. Um, I take the same kind of cardboard that goes in that we did for the beanies. I cut some, and I put it inside the cuff just to stretch that cuff out a little bit. Yeah, I like it. I like it. So you're doing more than one at a time this way? Yeah. So what I did is I built a little shelf below here because these don't like to sit on here like the beanies do okay they're too bottom heavy so i created a little shelf so they don't constantly slide off yep i created a little shelf to where it holds them like this and i can do two sets of gloves in one press or two pair of gloves so like one two three four individual gloves but done the same way um pressure about the same temp about the same and a 40 second dwell time same as same as what we do with the flex style Awesome. So a um, couple more questions before we wrap up. Uh, leather patches on the top of the bill. Um, I probably wouldn't recommend leather patches for uh, the top of the bill or top heat only. And you can experiment longer dwell time. Uh, like up, up here? Yeah, on top of the actual bill. Maybe faux leather. It's a little thinner. That or if you had like text or some script, but I don't know about like a big solid. Yeah. I mean, you can only go so big right. up on the brim. Yeah, we definitely have a hat bill platen that you can load onto your flat press. It'll allow you to do flat bill caps if you want to do under the bill or on top of the bill. Um, but I probably would be careful about doing like the really thick dimensional patches on that because they require a lot of top heat to get to that adhesive. You're not going to be able to come underneath through the bill uh, very effectively. Uh, does Skip have a YouTube channel? So no, but he is in the Heat Press for Profit Facebook group all the time sharing videos. So if you're on Facebook, look up Heat Press for Profit. He goes live a lot there. He is a Stalls ambassador. So we're going to be bringing more content from 
Skip and ambassadors like Skip that run actual businesses into the Stalls TV YouTube channel uh, to share as well. So we have more questions uh, than we could ever answer. And the, the best one is the last one, Natalie. Yes, we plan to bring more content to you uh, from Skip, more techniques on how to actually execute these things and grow your business. Trevor, Trevor asked, um, I talked to Trevor quite a bit. Um, the outside of flex style or embroidered patches on the flat press to doing the beanies or the gloves, I do substitute the eighth inch foam pad for the it's right underneath gray that cover sheet. silicone yep. pad. And what I do is I just fold it over, I double it up. And if we're gonna do a beanie that's not flex style or embroider, same concept, cardboard in, but double layer of gray silicone pad instead of the white application pad. On, help me out, on what? Anything that's not flex style or embroidered patch. So silicone dye block Got pads. It. So anything that matches the thickness of the eighth inch patch, like embroidered gray. patches, flex style, you're using this, yep. where it's a little bit thinner, like the silicone, the flock, we're using the doubled up yep. flexible application pad. Yep. Good, thanks Trevor. Hey, good to see you. Trevor's an ambassador as well. Thanks for uh, joining and watching. Um, man, I just feel like I wanna stay here and answer questions, but I'm sorry guys, we can't. But what we will do is uh, we like to respect the timeframes that we set. We got a little bit of a late start, so we are right up on just over our hour of content today. I tell you what, we will take a look at these questions and we will respond to them. We'll start a thread in our Heat Press for Profit Facebook group that both Skip and I will keep an eye on. And so uh, sharing photos of some of what we went over today, uh, feel free to jump in there, ask any follow-up questions if perhaps Shauna wasn't able to answer behind the scenes. 